So in this particular question, it says that the following table shows the known percentage proportion of bird types in a given region and the number of bird types recorded from a random sample. State the null and alternative hypotheses. From this question alone, we already know that this here is a chi-square test that we are talking about. So the fact that they wanted us to state a null and alternative hypothesis and we are comparing a known percentage proportion to a actual sample our observed values we know that this is a chi-square so the first thing that they want us to do is to state the null hypothesis so usually when i'm doing this kind of question what i usually do is i try to incorporate a portion of the question into the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis so it can be as close to the question and what they are expecting as much as possible so for instance one of the key things i've noticed in this first paragraph is that there's a known percentage proportion of bird type in a given region and this is basically the premise of what they expect that their results would come from so for the null hypothesis what i would say is i'll take these same words and say the known percentage proportion of bird types in a given region is a good representation of the number of bird types expected to be seen in that particular region. The alternate hypothesis would be the same thing, but instead of it being a good representation of the number of bird types, we would say it is not a good representation. So as you can see here, what we said is the known percentage proportion of bird types in a given region is not a good representation of the number of bird types expected to be seen in that particular region. So this is a null hypothesis and this is an alternate hypothesis. So the second thing that we need to do is calculate the test statistic. So in order to calculate the test statistic, we need to identify what is the expected value and also what is the observed value. So it says here that the number of bird types recorded from my random sample were noted here so this is the number in the sample that was recorded we know that this is the observed value these are the observed values in this case here we would have the expected proportions which we need to work out the actual expected values so generally speaking the standard formula to calculate the test statistic is the sum of the observed values minus the corresponding expected value squared divided by the expected value now the total number of observed values if we add these up you will get that so let's look at the total the total observed birds would be equal to 30 plus 170 plus 250 plus 350 plus 120 plus 80 this would give us a total of 1000 so we have 1000 birds observed what we are saying is that based on this model we could figure out what would have been expected to be seen in an experiment so in this case, if I was to say the expected value corresponding to each of these, we could work that out. So the first one here would be 1% of 1,000. So 1% 1 of 1,000, which would be 1 over 100 times 1,000, that would give us 10. Now the next one is 15% for bar type B, 15% times 1,000, which would give us 150. So then we would have had for bar type C, 25 over 100 times times 1000 again which would give us 250 then we would have 50 over 100 times that thousand which would give us 500 then we would have six percent for e which would give us six over 100 so 6 over 100 represents the percentage times 1000, which would give us 60. For the last one, we would have had 3 out of 100, and we multiply that to the 1000, which would have given us 30. If we add these back up, we would also end up with 1000. So this would have been the expected values based on this known percentage proportion above. Okay, so we have our values for O, and we have our corresponding values for the expectance, which we can now use in this formula. So now we have to set it up for each of these values and walk it out and see what our answer would be so we could say observe take away expectance so that would be 30 take away 10 and that would be squared divided by the expectance based on this formula and we'll add that to the next line 170 take away 150 we'll square that and divide that by 150 and we'll say 250 take away 250 we square that and we divide that by 250 then we add that to the next one which says 300 
150 minus 500 square that and divide that by 500 and we have 120 take away 60 and we square that and divide that by 60 and we add that to 80 take away 30 and we square that and divide it by 30 and we walk out the sum of that and once we add this up this would give us the test statistic so we have 30 take away 10 which is 20 squared over 10 here we would have 20 squared over 150 0 squared over 250 this one will give us negative 150 squared over 500 this will give us 60 squared over 60 here we would have 50 squared over 30 and this would simplify to 40 plus 8 over 3 plus 0 plus 45 plus 60 plus 250 over 3 so when we add these all together we get 231 so the next question asks us to work out what is the degrees of freedom of the test so we have one two three four five six different options so for those options we would say that the degrees of freedom would be equal to those particular options which is six minus one so that means our degrees of freedom for this test would be five now the last question asks us to state a valid conclusion for the test and give one reason for the conclusion stated so i have this diagram here to help with the explanation of this so typically when we are doing a chi-square test we usually determine a critical value and we determine this critical value using the degrees of freedom as well as the level of significance for this particular question they did not give us a level of significance but what we would usually do is use the degrees of freedom and level of significance to determine a value from a chi-square chart and once we have our test statistic being less than this critical value so say for instance in this case what if our critical value was 10 so what we would say is that once this test statistic is less than 10 we would accept the null hypothesis which is the first hypothesis however if it is more than 10 we would accept the alternate hypothesis now in this case they did not give us a level of significance in order to determine a critical value however we can make a decision without this because for this particular situation i would reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternate hypothesis So I would basically be saying that this known percentage proportion of bird types in a given region is not a good representation of the number of bird types expected to be seen in that particular region. Now I need to go to my particular chart that we would usually use. If you look at that particular chart, you will realize that this value far surpasses any possible value that would be a critical value therefore whatever level of significance we use 231 would be more than that so we are looking at a chart here and as you can see for the number of degrees of freedom for five for every single possible level of significance we have a number that's way lower than that 231 we were looking at so this here would represent if we had a significance level of 10 which would have been 9.236 this one is for five which would have been 11 this one would have been for two this would have been for one this one would have been for 0.5 and as you can see as we go along these numbers are not even anywhere close to the 231 that we looked at earlier now just imagine we were able to increase the degrees of freedom now if you look at the degrees of freedom even up to 100 our value for a level of significance for 0.5 percent is still not enough to cover our 231 so for that reason i am not gonna accept the null hypothesis and would have to choose the alternative hypothesis as the decision made for this particular test as you can see here i'm saying that the test statistic far surpasses any critical value that we can have for five degrees of freedom thus we have to use the alternate hypothesis that is my reason for using this conclusion stated that's why in this case you would notice that i rejected a null hypothesis in favor of the alternate hypothesis so this is something to bear in mind this one was just testing your understanding to be able to differentiate between different scenarios as you can see here we were able to use the concept or the principle of critical value even though we did not actually have to calculate a critical value so continue to practice and all the best in your exams